So quick show of hands, uh, how many companies here uh, are signatories of the Global Compact? Cool. And, and how many uh, of you are, uh, know about it and are thinking about it and have considered? Okay, 20, 30 hands, good. Well, let's just first of all start, because there's a lot of people obviously who aren't yet there, but uh, for the people who don't really know what uh, the compact is, it's a, it's a set of eight principles. Um, take it from there. Thank you so much, Joel, and it's, it's great to be here. I mean, what an amazing opportunity and what an amazing group of people. So I have been looking very much forward to these moments with you here. And um, the UN Global Compact is an initiative created by uh, the former Secretary General, Kofi Annan, 17 years ago, uh, basically to form a compact between the private sector and business to give globalization a human face. So we build on 10 principles, all related to UN uh, conventions on environment, on labor, on human rights, and on anti-corruption. Um, and all companies that join the initiative sign up to running their business according to these 10 principles, and also to report once a year on how that is progressing. So it's 10 principles, not eight, excuse me. <laughs> How many companies are, are now a part of it and where, where are they from? Well, we have uh, more than 9,500 companies. They are from all over the world. It's a mix of very big companies and small and medium-sized companies. So it's a very, it's a very mixed group, yeah. but all very dedicated. And, and what's, what's asked of them as signatories of the compact? What are they, what are they required to do? Well, the first thing we ask all companies is for their CEO to send a letter to the Secretary General and commit the company to adhere to these 10 principles. Um, the letter also includes a commitment to uh, help uh, reach what is today the Sustainable Development Goals. So that's also part of the agenda. And if companies uh, don't report on an annual basis, uh, we delist companies. So we have sort of delisted more than 7,000 companies. 7,000 7, companies. 7,000 in the 17 years that we have been in existence. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you've been head of this for like three years now? Yes. Um, what's your priority been in, in uh, leading this initiative? Well, my priority these days is of course, the global goals, the sustainable development goals, because I was at the UN building the day when all uh, state leaders in the world signed up to this 2030 agenda, and a few months later to the Paris Climate Agreement. Mm -hmm. So it was a very, very special moment, and I have been in the sustainability field for many years like you, Joe, but I have never seen this kind of common agenda for the world. Um, it's a world with many challenges. It's a fractured world. But the 17 goals set a very clear agenda. So we are campaigning across the world through all our uh, 70 local networks for companies to get to know the global goals and to integrate the goals in their business strategy of course, based on the 10 principles that almost must be in place to make sure that companies um, take the route of not doing harm and doesn't compromise one global goal in trying to reach another one. So, so explain a little bit how those 10 principles and the 17 goals interact. Are they overlapping? Are they completely different? Well, they actually fit pretty nicely together. So if you divide the 17 goals into an economic sphere, a, a social sphere, and an environmental sphere, you have the 10 principles fitting directly into these three dimensions. So I think there's a lot of logic in that. And um, many of our companies, are, of course, these days, uh, trying to work out 
how do we then report on both the 10 principles and on the global goals. So we have a, a global action platform on how to do that. But I think it, it makes quite a lot of sense and it's really nice and clear guidance for the companies to adhere to principles in their existing business and then head in the future uh, towards the 17 goals, you know, like having a really strong lighthouse that you can aim for. How much do you know about whether the goals, a company signing the compact, um, not the goals, the, the, the 10 principles, um, changes behavior. In other words, uh, you know, there are some people who say, well, yeah, the, the only ones who sign that are the ones who are doing that stuff anyway. Does this actually create additional new, uh, innovative, and, and hopefully bold behaviors? Well, uh, this summer, uh, leading up to the UN summit in September every year, uh, we asked a sample of 2,000 companies signed up to Compact across the world, big and small companies, First of all, how they are adhering to the 10 principles and implementing them in their business, and also how they have started addressing the goals. And what we are seeing is that today, among all our companies, 90% have really solid uh, policies and practices in place on human rights, on labor, on anti-corruption, which is a very nice decree, decree, uh, increase of more than 10% over last year. And we also have 75% uh, of the companies already addressing the global goals. How about the environmental piece? You mentioned uh, corruption, bribery, human rights. Um, first of all, how many of the goals relate to in environmental issues and, and how are companies doing on that? Um, I think for many companies that have been part of the sustainability agenda for, for several years, the environmental piece was the one they started doing. Right. And it's often, I shouldn't say the easy part, but it's the one where you have data, you can quantify, it makes sense to optimize your production, to say water, energy, and so on. And it's all like pretty laid out. Uh, the more challenging part is often the social part of the agenda because it doesn't immediately um, link into the financial bottom line. So here I think it's great that we have the human rights uh, themes really high on the agenda. I think we shouldn't be naive. There's, almost mo there's always more that can be done. So I'm very happy that this year, uh, the UN will be celebrating uh, the 70 year anniversary of the Human Rights Declaration. And we will do that with a lot of focus at the UN Global Compact, because still there are maybe even more inequality issues in the world than we have seen previously, both on gender inequality, on the opportunities for young people, and also in terms of decent work in the supply chain, mm -hmm. where we really, as a world community, need to do much more and focus on these areas. Yeah. So you've got a global, as you said, uh, you know, the companies that have signed this. Um, any observations about uh, US companies in terms of whether they're ahead of the curve as a, as a group, uh, behind, sort of in the middle of the pack? What are you seeing? Well, um, we are seeing American companies um, picking up um, the global goals in a really nice way, just as it is happening across the world. Um, I don't think there is a big difference in how global companies, international companies, deal with this, um, because they have to engage in a global client community. Um, I think there is a tendency that uh, some countries focus more on the environmental agenda. That's definitely what we are seeing here in the US. Uh, I'm just back from a trip to Africa, and here it was very interesting to what, see. What, what part? Uh, Kenya and Tanzania, that many companies focus a lot on the social inequality side. 
and integrate that very much as part of their daily business. So there is a little bit a different cultural history of how companies deal with environmental preservation or social inequality. But on an overall basis, I think it's pretty amazing that we have 75% of companies being aware of the global goals already. And <laughs> at the Compact, we have been running a campaign uh, through all our local networks that we call Making Global Goals Local Business. So we are pretty, how should I say, communications and marketing focused as well. Um, but I recall the Millennium Development Goals that were uh, in place before right. uh, the Global Goals, and it was definitely not the case that 75% of companies were aware of working with these goals. So I think if we should be positive and um, think about how we move forward, we are off to a nice start yeah. with the Global Goals. Yeah. Um, I think there's, I imagine that the signing the, the Global Compact, um, like any set of principles uh, or, or constraints, often breeds innovation. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing uh, innovative um, practices, anything coming out of uh, companies once they sign these? Well, I think that's one of the great elements of the Global Goals Agenda. Huh that there seemed to be a general understanding among companies that these goals are not going to be made with incremental innovation. Many companies clearly realize that this is big, this is something completely new, this is the challenges of the world boiled down to 17 goals. And many companies feel that they have to think in a very radical, breakthrough innovation way right. about their future business model, about their technology, about their future clients. So we see that often the CEO is directly involved in setting this agenda. And often it's an agenda that's about how to turn risks into business opportunity through um, an innovation agenda. And here many companies take inspiration from the goals. So if I should just uh, mention a, a few examples. Yep. Uh, for example, in the uh, financial sector, um, many financial institutions are critically aware that we need between five to seven trillion US dollars every year until 2030 to make the goals a reality. Right. We all know that the funding, the money is out there, but today it's not sort of focused into the themes of the goals. So we have many companies thinking about how they can launch new products that can help facilitate this development. So actually yesterday, uh, PIMCO, was launching um, an event in their headquarters together with Compact, launching, for example, SDG bonds. Hmm. And we have a, a large group of financial companies that are these days thinking about how could we be innovative in the way we run our existing businesses, in the way we evaluate um, companies uh, that we take in as clients, and also companies that are not uh, from the financial sector are very active in these areas, such as the energy company Enel, that are very interested because they are uh, investing and in setting up Windmill Park, for example, in Africa, and they want to understand better how to attract funding for these kind of initiatives. Yeah, um, I, I heard a story today um, from one of our uh, attendees here, uh, Paul Murray from Shaw Carpets, which is a Berkshire Hathaway company, told me that, first of all, they recently signed uh, the UN Global Compact. And in addition to that, and I think we're, I think we're announcing, I'm announcing this by virtue of telling you this story because I don't think it's public. Thank you. Um, and uh, <laughs> I hope that's okay, Paul, uh, that uh, they are putting 
in uh, adding the uh, condition in their terms and conditions for all of their suppliers as they sign new agreements and, and re-up or, or bring in uh, new partners that they too sign the UN Global Compact. I think that's a really interesting uh, uh, and innovative uh, approach of really uh, being, being able to leverage a commitment that they've made uh, at a much bigger scale. So uh, Paul, if you're here, kudos to, to you and Shaw for doing that. Um, are you seeing other things like that where, where companies are, are uh, you know, figuring out ways that, well, we're not, it's not just about us, our impacts in our supply chain, we've heard about, we heard from Walmart about Project Gigaton, are they also trying to, you know, help push uh, the, the, the principles upstream? Absolutely. I mean, Joel, I think that that's a great example, and, and thank you for the great news. So, so that's wonderful. I mean, we, we are seeing many companies focus on their supply chain, and actually in our survey, it comes across that 57% of our members see their supply chain and how to integrate the global goals going forward as one of the major challenges. So it's amazing to see more and more companies utilize their supply chain to drive this agenda. And of course, this is also part of the reason why the UN Global Compact has so many small and medium-sized companies. Because this is companies that are being asked by their a host company to actually join the initiative. Yeah. So I think this chain reaction is really important. And that's why, you know, the global companies that can really set this agenda are, are so forceful. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get to questions in just a minute, but you mentioned, uh, at least by reference, if not by name, uh, Project Breakthrough. That's the work that you're doing with our good friend John Elkington. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, you know, people, let me, how do I say this, often don't, asso don't typically associate the United Nations with breakthrough innovation, right? What's that about? What are you trying to do? And how does that fit into the compact? Um, well, the UN Global Compact is part of the UN, but we are not funded by the central UN budget. We are funded only by companies and by a number of governments. So these are do membership fees that companies pay yes. as they sign? Exactly. So we take the best from business and the best from the UN. We think the best from the UN is the principles, the conventions, the global nature of the initiative. But we are also applying many tools and best practices from business. And one of them is the breakthrough agenda. And I want to share with you that on the Global Opportunity Explorer database that, that uh, we have put out there, we have more than 500 examples of great companies that are already doing breakthrough innovation mm. on the global goals. So I really hope that everybody will take it's the It's an open, free, open it's resource. It's open, yeah. it looks like this, I mean, and it has examples from all sort of industries. And the latest example that I can maybe bring to you today on breakthrough innovation uh, is a new action platform that the Global Compact just launched actually on Friday in Oslo. And that will be our action platform number 10, adding to the nine ones that we are running already to engage companies. And that is a business action platform on the oceans. So I was very moved and touched to see uh, the presentation just before we got Christina on stage. Yeah. I think it explained in an amazing, beautiful way why it is that business now also needs to become engaged in creating a more sustainable situation in the oceans. Right. Great. Elaine, let's get a question or two in. Yeah, this is great in terms of the being able to provide tools like the Global Opportunity Explorer and the Action Platforms. Um, there are a number of questions that we've received that are about engagement. So it's kind of a three-parter, where um, one is engaging, how can we as businesses serve as an enabler to engage the general public in the SDGs, because it could scale passion and impact. Then there's also how do you uh, plan to launch UN SDGs that more clearly align to companies rather than governments? 
and in terms of you know being able to actually uh, kind of align those incentives a little bit better. And then also, then the last one is more around keeping companies accountable once you actually have engaged them in a commitment. Yeah. Well, those are three, three good questions, and we don't have a lot of time. But um, so the first one was about, what was it again? <laughs> general public. General public. Oh, yeah, general yeah. public. Yeah. Are you, is that part of your, your agenda or your mission? Well, I, I, I think it's, it certainly is. I mean, our, our vision at the Global Compact is to create a global movement of responsible companies and organizations that can basically bring the goals about. If we look at all the companies that are part of Global Compact, they include more than 66 million employees. Mm. I actually think that's a very nice way to get in touch with the general public. Do you have tools or have you been doing anything to encourage yes. that? Yes. So we have um, the SDG Compass that explains in a very simple way how to work with the SDGs. We have a blueprint on how to take leadership on the SDGs that is a little bit more advanced tools for companies that want to stay, take it one step further. Uh, we have a very nice academy for all organizations and companies that want to engage in learning on each of uh, the goals. And we are developing a navigator that makes it easy for companies wow. to determine how they are doing on the principles in each of the SDGs. The second question had to do with aligning with what businesses do, the SDGs. Uh, it feels like these action plans address a lot of that, like the action plan on oceans aligns with one of the sustainable development goals on oceans as well, right? Yeah, well, well what we have tried to illustrate on the picture you, you see here is how each of our action platforms is a combination of some of the 10 principles with uh, some of the global goals. So it's all uh, exploring how we can take action on themes that combine both the goals and the principles. It might sound a little bit more complicated than it is. Um, I think when we are working on decent work in the global supply chain, we all know exactly what the problem is. We know it's very closely related to human rights, but also to optimizing companies' supply chain. And you know, here a company like Seb Ariba here in the States have taken leadership yeah. because they understand how important their own supply chain is for their business results, but also they can help other companies optimize their supply chains in a responsible way. So before we go, what's the one thing you want this audience to know about the, the compact uh, and the principles that they may not realize that you think is really important? Well, what I think is really important for all of us and for the world and for the coming generations is that these 17 goals, that is the plan. That is what we have. Right. And there's no plan B. So we might as well really unite to make these goals a reality. Business can play a huge role. The world is never going to make the global goals without the efforts of business. But I also want to end by quoting Mr. Gandhi, who used to say, be the change you want to see in the world. Because none of all this is going to happen unless unless each of us as individuals take ownership. We might work in business, in organizations, anywhere, but we have to really use each our platform. So we have to look in the mirror. There's nobody else who's going to come and fix this for us. It's us, it's here, and it's now. Well, I love that the, the compact and the, and the global goals have really created a roadmap for business, but really for humanity. And, and it, it allows each of us to find our way on that map to, to uh, just all kinds of really potentially exciting destinations. And so thank you for that. 
Thank you for being here. Please join me in thanking Lisa Kingo.